Steve's first target is the crowning glory of St Paul's, the Dome. Towering more than 110 metres above London, it weighs in at around 65,000 tonnes. That's the same as an aircraft carrier. The dome also carries the weight of the stone lantern at the very top. At around 700 tonnes, it's a building in itself, the equivalent weight of four houses stacked on top of each other. The key to how the gargantuan dome supports the heavy weight of the lantern is hidden deep inside its structure. What I want to discover is how the dome of St Paul's Cathedral actually works. What is it like inside the dome? How does the whole thing actually fit together? What is the structural engineering behind the dome of St Paul's Cathedral? Steve has climbed up to the highest point of the dome, the inside of the lantern. As a structural engineer, I get really excited about spaces like this. People all over London look at St Paul's Cathedral and see this enormous lantern right up there in the sky. You've got to realise how high in the air we actually are. This point here, 700 tonnes of lantern sit on two layers of brickwork. What we've got here are the biggest forces in the entire cathedral. Those forces travel huge distances before they get down to the foundation. And if I just look down this hole here, I can see right down to the cathedral floor. If you actually get this wrong, you've got 700 tonnes of material travelling 250 feet right down to the floor. St Paul's Dome is among the largest in Northern Europe. Wren was inspired by new architectural trends, and designing St Paul's with a dome was a break from the traditional spires of medieval Gothic cathedrals. Why do you think Wren wanted to do domes rather than the traditional spire? I think the idea is to create this very large space inside that isn't full of columns. So when you think about volume, the best way to cover a large volume is a dome. That's a very efficient system. You could create this enormous space, you know, this, this sort of heavenly space. I'm pretty sure he liked the idea of reaching for the heavens. Building a dome that could support the 700-tonne lantern and its seven-metre-tall cross was something that no engineer had ever attempted. It's very difficult because it's only really stable once the final piece is in place. I mean, it either stands up or crashes to the ground, so you get one chance to get it right. And Wren succeeded with style. It's absolutely magnificent, completely breathtaking. But strangely, that dome isn't the same dome that you see from the outside. The whole thing is an optical illusion that hides many secrets, and we want to find out just how Wren did it. Steve has asked the team to climb to the top of St Paul's. This is the first time that the dome's internal spaces have ever been scanned. And the team is encountering cramped areas filled with complicated structures. To connect this scan to that scan in this narrow cavity is tricky. Steve is now going to take me up for a vertigo-inducing closer look. Wow! Look at this! <laughs> Whispering Gallery, look how far down it is. Up here, we're in the heart of an optical illusion. While this area looks dome-shaped from below, we're actually in a structure shaped more like a huge traffic cone that funnels up to the lantern above us. It's an amazing space. It sort of plays tricks on your mind, really. The stones of its walls are another illusion. These blocks have been painted on to deceive the eye. With our technology, we're about to strip away this groundbreaking dome to reveal a masterpiece of deception. 